I'm sorry, but apparently I did not do my homework very well once again. Really how is that? Remember when last time I told you about quantitative easing? I told you that they were creating money electronically, like it was some kind of big fact. Yes, I remember that. You really blew apart those ignorant gold bugs. Not quite. It turns out that the term printing money is just a slang term that is used because it is easier to say. It is not meant to be taken literally. In fact, Ron Paul in an interview with Judge Napolitano admitted that there is not much actual money printing that goes on anymore. Many other Austrian economists have admitted this same fact. That is a pretty big mistake you made, but what about the fact that you said quantitative easing is reversible? Doesn't that mean it is still harmless? No, in fact it is still dangerous in that it can lead to higher inflation, not just in the US but all around the world. It is true that the dangers to the US economy are minimal, but quantitative easing could lead to higher inflation rates in countries like China, India, and Brazil. In fact, this is happening now. Why should I believe you? Aren't these only the opinions of ignorant people on YouTube? No. This is not true. In fact, many mainstream economists who are not even associated with the Austrian School of Economics have criticized the Fed's actions. Could you give me an example? Yes, in fact Nobel Prize winner and respected Keynesian economist Joseph Stiglitz has been highly critical of the Fed's actions for the reasons I just mentioned. But Joseph Stiglitz does not agree with you on every point. You can't use him as a source. Whether or not Stiglitz agrees with me on every point is irrelevant, he agrees with me on this point, which is the reason I cited him. It is not only Stiglitz that has criticized the Fed either. In fact, there have been economists all over the world who have criticized the Fed's actions, most of them from the countries that I mentioned earlier. Even in Europe the Fed has been criticized. German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schiebel even said the US policy was clueless. Wow. Those are strong words. But wouldn't deflation be a disaster? Isn't that why the Fed has enacted these policies? No. Deflation would not necessarily be a disaster. It turns out that deflation is more complicated than I originally believed. Deflation, like inflation, has winners and losers. Deflation benefits creditors at the expense of debtors and rewards savings. Whereas inflation does the opposite. The problem with deflation is that it increases real interest rates. That is bad for people who are in debt. Debt isn't a mortgage debt. Wouldn't this increase foreclosures and possibly cause another recession? Yes, it could and probably would. But the problem is not deflation itself. It is that we have so much debt in the first place. Deflation is only bad if you have a highly indebted economy. While deflation would cause another recession, this might be the only way to restructure our economy. From an economy based on debt finance to an economy based on savings. So you're saying that a recession can be good? When has that ever been the case before? In fact, it has been the case many times in history. Can you give me an example? Yes, in fact, I can give you two. The first is the Depression of 1921. This depression was brought on by the Fed raising interest rates in order to fight wartime inflation. After this recession was over, the economy recovered and entered the Roaring Twenties, a period of robust economic growth. The second example is the early 1980s when Fed Chairman Paul Volcker raised interest rates and brought on a recession in order to end the stagflation of the 1970s. I did not know that. But aren't houses good? Don't we want more people living in houses? Not necessarily. Homes while they are good places to live, they are almost completely useless to the economy as a whole and are in some ways harmful. How is that? For one thing, houses contribute nothing to real wealth, they just sit there, they are non-productive. They also trap people in the same location. Some people don't want to leave their first home and will choose the home over a new and more productive job. Also, people expect houses to appreciate in value. This puts pressure on the Federal Reserve and the rest of the economy to be constantly maintaining home prices. Okay, I think I somewhat understand your point, but what about the Great Depression? The federal government followed your advice and let the deflation run its course. This resulted in one of the longest and deepest depressions of all time. 
doesn't that disprove your thesis? No, in fact there is much disagreement on what the actual cause of the Great Depression was. Many respectable mainstream economists who are not Austrians have challenged this theory. Examples are Leah Hanian of UCLA and Harold Cole. They argued that it was wage regulations that caused the depression and not deflation. Ha ha. I got you. Someone on YouTube already debunked that theory. He provided a quote that proved that not all manufacturers maintained wage rates. No, that individual did not debunk anything. A quote is first of all not statistical analysis. Secondly, the quote that he provided only indicated that small manufacturers did not go along with the plan. The problem with his analysis is that it overlooks the fact that power was highly concentrated in the 1920s. Most of the economy was large manufacturers. But aren't high wages good? Doesn't having more money allow you to buy more products and services? Yes it does, but you are taking several things for granted. Number one, you are forgetting the person who has to pay the wage, they are losing about the same amount of money they will gain from increased demand. Secondly, you are not factoring in increased unemployment. Which scenario would be better for demand, 10 employed workers making $5 an hour instead of $7, or 10 unemployed workers making $0 an hour instead of $7? That makes sense, but one more question. What about Japan? Isn't the stagnation of Japan due to deflation? The Japanese situation is more complicated than just deflation. Japan has a massive public debt as well as many structural problems. In fact, Japan tried many of the policies that the US is trying now, including massive fiscal stimulus and government bailouts. The real problem is that the Japanese deflation was not sharp enough to wipe out malinvestments and restructure the economy. Thank you. I have learned a lot.